السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Good morning, good afternoon, uh, wherever you are uh, I wish you a happy time and a happy life wherever, whenever you are for all of you Today we'll be talking about a subject which is not new, it's old but new as well called conflictology comes from conflict the subject of conflict or the science of conflict. Why I'm talking about this subject today? Last week, I had a discussion with uh, a colleague of mine from Turkey. He's originally from Sudan from a place called Darfur, which is most of us know by the moment Darfur as an area. Second, second. Uh, Brother Abdul Aziz, credit goes to him because he sent me a text message on WhatsApp in Arabic and talking about conflictology. For my ignorance, I have no clue what he was talking about. But for his credit, he opened my mind to try to think seriously about a new, which is stroke old subject, which been put on the table for us since most of the Arab countries and most of the Muslim countries are suffering from conflict, different kind of conflicts. Abdul Aziz is one of those brilliant people who is dedicated to the mission of humanitarian work and is working now for the Syrian in uh, Turkey. And why I'm talking about Darfur? Darfur is a, a noble place that uh, nurtured the Muslim, the Muslims and Islam for years and years and years. A lot of Hafiz of Quran and a lot of scholars, a lot of aid was sent from them to Hejaz and was called now Saudi Arabia. Thank you, Abdul Aziz, and thank you for opening the discussion with me last week. As I said before, I have no clue what I was going to talk about, but we have talked about it. If it's an old new subject, we have to look back at the history of conflict. I put this structure in front of all of us to realize that because of I'm not an expert in conflictology, but my role is to structure the idea for you to go and research and be a pioneer or a leader in or of this subject. Conflict is as old as the creation of man. Like we said, history of conflict from the time of the Cain and Abel, the sons of Adam. It happens between birds, it happened between individuals, it happened between countries, it happened between tribes, it happened to uh, A research is a talk to let you to do the research. It's not a talk to show you my knowledge, because I'm not knowledgeable like all of you. It's, you find East Africa is different to West Africa. South Africa is different to North Africa. Okay? Middle East is different to Central Asian Republic. Latin, Latino America is different to other areas. Okay? China, Japan, and other. Find all these geographical locations have got different types of conflicts happen during the past and even at the, 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 the current time. The cycles, does the conflict happen every year? Like actually, if we come back to Darfur, where, where Brother Abdul Aziz came from, okay, we found there's a big who, 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 who happened in 2004, 2005, 2006 about Darfur. Okay? This conflict between the pastoralists and the farmers happened here. 
Rashid, some injured, and the tribal leader or the sultan or the sheikh of the tribe sit down, take the blood money, and reconcile, and here we go. First of all, they said Islam and the Christian. It's a joke, big joke. Darfur is exclusively Muslim area. Then they said Janjaweed, the genie jumping on the horse. And go, it goes on and goes on. And they did not leave the local community to settle the problems of the conflict. In spite of the fact, the nomad in Darfur knows how he or she can sort this problem because it's in the history book of Darfurian that actually it happens every year. This is a cycle. Culture. Every conflict has a different culture. So when we study the conflicts, when we involve ourselves in a conflict region, we have to understand the culture of the two parties, whether they are different religion, uh, sorry, we have got the, from the same religion, from the same country, having different cultures. So we have, we have, as a humanitarian worker, you have and we have um, to understand the culture, not only the religion. Culture sometimes in certain areas is stronger, stronger, stronger than the religion itself and more holy than the holiness of the religion itself. Religion and the values also. If you go to an exclusively Muslim area, if you go to an exclusively Christian area, if you go to an exclusively Buddhist or Hindu or Sikh or Rastafarian area, you have to understand the religious leaders, the role, the text of the religion before you go there because it's a conflict zone. And even within the religion, there are different school of thought. The different sects there. All this kind of thing will enable me to understand the conflict structure. Conflict structure starts from the definition, the history, the types, different types of the conflict, causes, geographical location, cycles, culture, religious, and values. State stability itself. Such a state is the strong state, and there's a conflict inside the strong state, or this is a fragile state. Or this is a failing state. You have to look at it. Somalia, it is between fragile and failing state. Libya now is a fragile state. Because it's, yani, I hope that it's going out from the failing. Into, it seems that actually it's close to a fragile state. Yemen now in a big conflict, it is... Fragile stroke failing state. Okay. Syria, it is between both of them. Other countries, like Afghanistan, it is the same. It's fragile state, supported by foreign powers, or failing state. In certain areas fragile, certain area is failing. Neighboring countries. Why is it neighboring countries? Because does the neighboring country, does the neighboring country have an interest in this country? So it creates the conflict, it's a role, or it is becomes a part of peace negotiation and peace building and peace process. You have to find the interest of your neighbor in countries in your country. Are they supporting? to one party, or are they reconciling to have a state of stability in the neighborhood? Regional powers. You look at the Middle East. Within the Middle East, there are regional powers. And above the regional powers, there are global powers. As you said, as we said here, neighboring countries, regional powers, and Stronger than a superpower. Why neighboring countries, regional power, and superpower have an interest in the conflict? It's economy. Economy runs the politics of regional power, global power, and neighboring countries. Everybody might be interested in your geography, interested in your resources, whether it's water, mineral, 
whatever they call it, interested in you. So you have to value your own country to know how much value others are having for it. Regional powers, no bit. Regional and global organizations and the role. What role are the regional and the global organization nowadays strong enough to force conflicting powers to sit down on the table, to have a resolution? In my own opinion, from my little experience, none of them have it. Neither League of Arab States, nor OIC, Organization of Islamic Conference, nor the African Union, nor the UN have the power to have to enforce peace. Especially the UN, because of the veto system. How many resolutions have been taken by the Security Council and it was not implemented? The weakness of the regional power and the others. The society itself, the, conf- the infrastructure of the society inside, you have to look at it. The ethnicity, uh, the culture, uh, the religion. Okay, this composition inside your country playing a role as well. This should be surrounded and dictated by, see, see these two lines on the side here, will be affected positively or negatively by the policy and the philosophy and the principles of war and terror, as well as the global politics and the interest of the global and superpower in your region. So when we look at the structure of conflictology, it goes from definition, history, types, causes, geographical location, cycles of conflict, culture, religious, religions and values, state stability, neighboring countries, regional powers, regional and global organization, and the composition of the community in your country. We go from conflict to peace after signing the peace agreement. And peace, after peace, we should look at the transitional period. Any transitional period after conflict will never be less than five years. Miraculously, it becomes five years, but could go up to 10 years and more. Because the people who are coming back to their homeland or the displaced people inside the country have to go back to where they were living before. They went out as community, they're going back as clusters of people. In the case of Syria, seven years, those people lived outside either their countries, having, adopting different culture, different manners, different values. And when you bring them back, you have to realize that they are clusters of people coming back to build a community inside Syria, or inside the other countries. So it takes about five to 10 years. Characteristics of, in my view, characteristic of the transitional period is first of all, we have to agree on number one, establishing the truth and reconciliation principle. That's what happened in, in South Africa and that's what the Prophet ﷺ, uh, applied in Hudaybiyah Treaty. Uh, one of the other principles, sorry, one of the other principles is to build the local municipalities. Very important, local municipalities, to invest in local municipalities. Uh, education, we should focus on skills education, vocational training, and uh, so, so we, should, we should invest in, in, in skills education and vocational training. Economy should be based on local community and village market. We should build the local community market and the village market. Uh, Sometimes we should not differ on the disagree on the old constitution, we might be using it for a while, till we, uh, re- uh, till we agree and settle and become a community or become a country or become a nation and dr- uh, r- write our new constitution. Uh, people might need to capture the criminals who killed their uh, loved ones or raped their loved ones. Yes, we can claim this, but legally you have to collect the information before we start uh, applying the uh, 
rule of law, uh, the, the, the rule of law. Uh, corruption as well, you can't just fight corruption from day one because they've got many deep states within the societies, many deep states within the, within the community. So you have to create the system who will enable you to dig down deep to find the deep states within the states or within the community or within the society so you'll be able to fight corruption as we go. How to protect this period, the transitional period? First of all, as we said, we agree before, uh, the truth and reconciliation has to be there. Uh, establishing another rule, which is the needs, the ability and the capability. The needs of people to come back to their country. Fine. A great need. What's your ability and the capability to deal with their needs? Can you receive 100,000, 50,000, 20,000, 10,000? What program you are doing for them as well? So needs, capability, and ability. This is my own view and my own fear. We were attending the conference of reconstruction of Iraq in, uh, in, in Kuwait uh, two weeks ago. Huge amount of money will come. If this huge amount of money will come to any country who is still in the semi-fragile state, not stable state, any country might have a deep state within the state, a depth of corruption that we don't know, and if you pour onto, onto them few billions, or 10 billions, or 50 billions, or 100 billions, it will go waste. That's why my, my fear is no for gigantic construction projects with a huge amount of money, because this will increase the corruption and will recreate or reinvent or restart the conflict again. Building local governments, yes, so we did it twice as, as you know, to reaffirm local local governments after we do local municipality, we mean local municipality, investing in local municipalities. And this is how we can look at it this way. If this is our priority in the transitional period, I invest 10% of my effort and my money in education, vocational skills education, 10% in building the local market, okay, 10% in rehabilitation of the armed groups, making them a part of the civil society or a part of the army later on, or a part of security, 10% to building the municipalities, so uh, rehabilitate the municipalities. Six percent capacity building for the individuals. Six percent to establish and build local civil society organization. Six percent for the awareness. Okay. Six percent for temporary shelter, not permanent shelter. Okay. Five percent for relief. Five percent for health care. 5% for water and sanitation for water and, uh, water and, and health and water and sanitation. 5% to fight corruption. 4% for the constitution. 4% to uh, legislation. 4% for the blood money. 4% as reserve. If we look at them, I look at the green color. 20, 10, 10, 20. 666, 38. I said these are these are 38% is to build the country. Okay. 20% rehabilitation is the blue, which is rehabilitation of the armed groups and municipalities. 20 21% is relief, which include temporary shelter, relief, health care, and wash, water and, and water and sanitation. And uh, legislation is uh, 17%, which is corruption, constitution, uh, legislation, and blood money, and 4% reserve. This is how I look at it. 
If we look back here at uh, what we have been discussing, this is our uh, structure of the transitional period, and this is reconciliation. Should be surrounded. Should agree on reconciliation. Should agree on our needs and ability, and should agree to agree on agreement, complementarity, and partnership. And here, no, no, no huge loan or grants. So these four: one, the blue, the red, the, the yellow, the black, and the red are the protector of the transitional period. If we don't reconcile. If we don't know the needs of the people or our ability, if we don't agree on agreement, complementarity and partnership, if we don't agree that we don't want at that time when we are in a fragile or stroke, failing state to take big loans or big grants, huh? we are not going to be successful in the transitional period. Look at it here. As I said, 30%, 38% on, uh, on established Establishment or building the state. On building the state, this is, I think, there's a, 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 a grammar. A, there's a mistake in the spelling here. I put in this one awareness, six percent is in the while using it in the process of building the society. Why I put awareness? Because I want to tell every returnees that the life is not going to be cozy. It's going to be peaceful, but it's difficult. I have to raise the awareness of the people. So 38%, 38% here to uh, build the society. Uh, rehabilitation, I said 20%. 21% is relief, which is, could be changing later on when actually we don't need much relief. Legislation and laws, 17% and 4% reserve. This is a transitional period after we have the peace negotiation settled. What is this? This is how I look at uh, structuring the, 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 the society or the state from inside. The central green area, which is a core, based on three elements, economy, civil society, sector, stroke organization, legislation, law, and legal. These three are the pillar of this building, the structure of the country. Say them again. The green is economy in the middle based on the skilled people, the local market. The right arm of it, which is uh, building a strong civil society sector stroke organization and the left arm is law legislation and legal okay we go from there to the top the yellow is health the bottom yellow is education and this is finance the right yellow or uh, orange and this is uh, uh, during this period uh, we might have a lot of mines and mine fields and a lot of rubbles actually which have been left after the destruction of the uh, state buildings. So we have to put these four components with these three green health, education, finance, and mines, and actually cleaning the uh, rubbles, uh, uh, rebels of, of, of uh, uh, the destroyed uh, buildings. If you look at the uh, uh, purple, this is purple? Purple, purple, how yeah. Purple? Yeah. Well, violet. I bought the rights here. Rights based up approach, which is youth, family, and woman. To be surrounding this core, core of the, the core group of building the state. Education, health, finance, my, and this mine and uh, killing the rebels is actually uh, temporary. It's, it's short, it's, maybe it might take about five years, might take about ten years, but not forever. We can be changed later on. But women, family, youth, and rights is very important. The blue is a second layer. Top is the army. 
bottom here is the security. Then we look at actually the services like transportation, like uh, communication, like policies, like foreign policy here as well, like culture, uh, uh, culture, ideology, like actually construction, like media. See, this blue gives you the second layer after the yellow one. So the, the, the dark yellow one, that was the closest to the green. Then we go back to the army, build the army, security, and all this kind of services here, foreign, foreign, foreign policy, policies as a whole, transportation and, uh, and communication, media, uh, other construction we have, culture and so on. So. The light yellow at the, at, the, at, the, at the border here, which is uh, talked about religion, values, manner, uh, tourism, building local markets, keep building local markets, research, harafiyin, uh, which is good hand, um, uh, the manual workers, skilled manual workers, agriculture, uh, climate, uh, and uh, industry, investment, water, health, and san water and sanitation. See, this is how we look at it when we pass the transitional period and we go to another period to build the state. But I'm focusing here on the very middle, economy, civil society organizations, and sector, le le legislation and law, health, education, finance, clearing the uh, mines, and the core in purple, which is women, family, youth, and rights-based approach. We agree that the, 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 the transitional period could be up to 10 years or more, but if we move out from the transitional period in the first 10 years, then we have to develop the state structure. Okay? There's a missing one here. State structure. The second stage is the state structure. Structure of the state institution. Then the third uh, one, which is state development and its global role. Uh, then number one, no, no this is, I think the, there's something wrong here. Can I have a look at that? Something wrong here. First of all, it is this transitional period. After that, completion of the state institutions, second 10 years. Then state stability, number three. Then state development and its international law, then what's next, what's next, what's next. I see it again because it's, it's written wrong here. First of all, completing the transitional period, then uh, completing, building the structure of the state institution. Then the third one, state stability. The fourth one, this, this should be number four, it is state development and its international role. Then after that, What's next? What's next has to be a part of our thinking whenever we do anything to our society. So coming back to uh, what we have been discussing, just I took three minutes uh, over the time. I uh, just to repeat this again. This might take about 30 or 40 or 50 years after the transitional period. Look at it again. If you can uh, rewrite it, if you want. Uh, transitional period. Completing, building the uh, structure of the state institution, then the state stability, then after that state development and its global role, then after that, what's next, what's next, what's next. So to conclude uh, what we have been saying over the last nearly half an hour, First of all, to thank Abdul Aziz. Thank you, sir. 
and uh, for inspiring us to have this discussion today. Then we'll look at any new subject. If we structure it this way or in any different way, we'll be able to become a pioneer in such a subject. Don't be scared of new terminology. Because the researchers who want to make money out of you are reinventing or rewriting the names again. You should lead. You should lead. You should lead. By structuring any idea. Then the transitional period talked about it. Then I show in the transitional period 38% in the, in, the, in the green is to build the state, which is education, economy, uh, build, uh, capacity building, building civil society and awareness. 20% rehabilitation, rehabilitation of the armed group, rehabilitation of the uh, municipalities. 21% in relief, which is uh, temporary shelter, relief, health care, and water and sanitation. And 17% uh, uh, in le uh, legis legislation, which is to fight corruption, to write the new constitution, to write the new laws, as well as to uh, get the rights of the people to uh, criminalize the criminals. And the last one, four percent is uh, reserve. This is how we protect the uh, transitional period after peace, uh, uh, after peace negotiation, which you have to agree on reconciliation in blue, uh, to know the needs of the people and our ability to agree on agreement, complementarity and partnership, and to refuse to take a huge sum of money uh, as loans or grants because of the state, or not a state, uh, actually, uh, the, the, the level of corruption at that time. Uh, so this is, sorry, it should be going this way. And this is, as I mentioned before, and this is the, the, how the state should look like when you come out in stable, stability. And this is the pyramid which I, 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 uh, I uh, explain about the differences, uh, there's some mistakes here. Uh, so I thank you very much for being patient to listen to me today. And I hope that you never give up and don't, be, don't ever be shocked about a new terminology put on the table. Take the terminology, Think about it and change it into a structured idea. If you structure the technology, it might be as we as we put it here, or you can add more points into it. But don't be taken or shocked or the يعني, uh, put off by uh, a name of a new terminology, of a science, or new terminology, of a subject. Go deep down into it, structure it, and think about it, and you will be a pioneer, and you'll be leading, and people will be following you. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.